Hello, this is Justin William Savoy. So what I'm doing right now is I am organizing what I have left from the previous collection and what I've acquired recently um, of my books on Christian spirituality and theology. And then I'm doing all of my other books, particularly classics and whatnot, um, separately from this, all of my different Penguin, Oxford, Signet, all the different um, volumes by set. So if there is a theology book, say, that's in like the Saints of the Desert Fathers or something of that nature that is in the um, Penguin Classic series or published by Oxford, for Oxford classics or something like that, then it's not going to be found over here, um, most likely, or um, the newest stuff that I'm collecting, Ignatius um, Press, but this is just one shelf. Now, these are most of my reader's editions or um, paperbacks that I have um, managed to keep after losing quite a large collection of antiquarian books and um, having to start with the boxes that I had left, um, thanks be to God, and um, also the um, newer books that I acquire from the um, different places, thrift stores, metaphysical, library, uh, media exchange, and other things that I've talked about in um, previous videos. So this um, collection of books um, I'm just responding to a text message really quick, um, has to do with, um, not necessarily my, um, theological, um, or spiritual bent in any ways, but a variety of different authors that are from both, um, the Orthodox as an Eastern Orthodox, Roman Catholic, uh, reform tradition and some Christian spirituality and some other things, um, study helps and things of that nature, um, I'm just slowly putting it together, but I thought I'd go through with some of these things um, and look at them. Um, perhaps, well, we could start with um, some of my Orthodox um, books. Now, um, I'm very happy to have these volumes, and some of these were from when I was studying for an additional theology degree, um, which I won't really go into, but it was in Eastern Christian studies, particularly um, Antiochian. And... Uh, so, I could talk about these or just maybe show these. Now, this is not an Orthodox book. Um, but anyways, um, it's kind of eclectic what I have now. Here's more Reformed type of stuff. Um, and just because I'm rebuilding back my collection. Um, and also on this other shelf to my right, I'm not going to show you, which is a total mess right now. I have a bunch of hardbound volumes like Encyclopedia Britannica's. Um, great books. I have an older edition of Mere Christianity. There's some Aristotle there. Uh, like some Banner of Truth and um, other Reformed Sprinkle publications. Uh, the Complete Works of Augustus Topole, William Whitaker, all kinds of other stuff. And then I have some older Bibles and Illustrated Dictionaries and like Story of Philosophy by Durant. Um, Decline. William Gibbons, uh, the decline of the um, Western civilization, or um, or Rome, um, the life of the Greeks by Durant, um, Edersheim, all kinds of different random scholars that I find helpful in my studies. But um, I'm trying not to shake this camera too. Sorry about that, guys. But yeah, so. Um, many of these, <laughs> Calvin would roll over in his grave. There's Hans Kung next to him, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, you know, and like, I'm not going to get into any kind of theo theological discussions with people who are like, why do you have this scholar or this? Like, I collect the full range now at this point, um, and I read pretty broadly and deeply. Um, not only within the Christian tradition, but um, a lot of perennial works and stuff as well. My main focus has been on this sort of stuff right now, kind of, um, um, I've been focusing on quite a bit of um, Reformation and Counter-Reformation work, Puritan works, I'm particularly interested in um, 
um, Anglo Catholicism's role in that, um, Roman Catholicism, Puritans, um, so I have Vermig Vermigli, and I will acquire something like, um, Robert Bellarmine, um, also to put in here. Um, I have some more of, uh, Peter Ramos's works. I actually had a book, um, printed on demand particularly that I don't even think anyone else has a copy of that I have in my collection I've shown on a previous video. Uh, the Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius. I'm working on getting some um, other Jesuit works, but they're not necessarily um, Christian works. They might be anthropological works or things of that nature. But I'm trying to stay within the confines of um, the Reformation, the Counter-Reformation, um, the Church of England, English Catholicism, Anglo... Anglican... Um, kind of reformed also um so it's been interesting to study that stuff some elizabethan and uh tudor type of stuff um anyways i'm gonna move along but that's just been my kind of range of interests and studies right now anglo catholicism and roman catholicism um still some puritan stuff um, if we get into here, we get more into, like, you know, some of these are just, uh, I don't really use that Strong's at all. I had a really good older version, uh, Strong's before in the past. I, I would use it if necessary. I just don't find it necessary. And most of my language study helps and things like that, um, were also lost. Um, I'm not going to be going back to that anymore. It was a traumatic time, but, you know, um, glory be to God, I still have, retain quite a few books, especially readers editions or paperback, um, editions, which is fine. Um, and, um, I guess there's a lot of stuff from St. Vladimir's Seminary Press here and the more Orthodox stuff. Um, there's some, um, I'm trying to think, Marinology stuff. There's Callisto Swear's book and the Orthodox Church. Um, there's some, actually, here's a Jesuit scholar here, uh, Robert J. Taft. You may have heard of him. And I had a newer edition of that book when I was in school, um, but studying liturgics. But I lent that out to a friend whose sons are considering the priesthood in Roman Catholicism, and it wasn't returned. I'm not really a huge Piper fan, but I do have some interest in Neo-Calvinists and I read some of that stuff, uh, Sproul, uh, Pink, you know, um, so here's some Spurgeon, conf I have several editions I have of the Confessions. I do really like, um, Shaco Endo's book, Silence, um, City of God, wonderful book, and so... I guess, and down here is just, here's, I'll just show you guys all of this, and many, many of these books, um, I had hardbound copies of these authors' works, not ever for Migley, but a lot of the other stuff, uh, New Theology stuff you see, um, or say, standard classic patristical stuff. But I have plenty that I'm happy with here that I can read. I do a lot of reading through electronic resources and I get older documents. Um, I made a previous video showing my insane notebook and note method taking for later on when I compile um, annotated bibliographies and just my kind of stream of consciousness, free flowing way of doing that. And um, so, that's always a good time, but um, I think may basically my studies in the future are going to be more Jesuit studies, Reformation, Counter-Reformation stuff for now. As I said, I'm always very interested in real presence and theology around the Eucharist and sacraments and things like that too. Yeah, stuff like this I got down here, like this Eusebius and Josephus and 
um, those kind of things I really um, I had older versions of those books but now they're gone I need to get looking at my hardbound books right now I think that I need to get a copy of Philo of Alexandria Philo Philo um, I think so yeah so I'm looking at some old Harvard classics I got. A lot of that stuff, I got those Harvard cla some Harvard classics when I uh, lived in an apartment. I hauled those things back. I was on foot and I went acro came across an antique store that had some books and I grabbed those. Um, but this is almost like stuff that survived the shipwreck. And um, I had a very trying time of life and I'm settling in here beautiful southern Oregon and I am able to rebuild so a lot of this stuff I acquired fairly recently like I'm rebuilding this classics um, of Western spirituality this is the Jane D Kelly book here uh, given to me as a gift these are not my notes these are someone else's who gave this book to me. It's an older, um, pretty knackered up version of this. I don't know if there's any personal information there, but uh, Early Christian Doctrines, J and D. Kelly. So it's helpful. And I'm trusting in God and just knowing that my library will be rebuilt. Um, I have a lot of, uh, on my desk, books of my current interests right now. I'm reading some Joel Beakey stuff on, on meeting the Puritans and um, a guide to Puritan uh, reprints. And um, I also have a lot of different um, books out there right now on Trent and um, the Senate of Dort, things like that. Here's a Westminster Confession of Faith. That's kind of current to what I'm interested in. And some of the Caroline Divines, such as John Doan and G George Herbert. Um, here's a scholar that I do like quite a bit, Yaroslav Pelikan. And if you're familiar with him, um, he did convert to Orthodoxy. And was he a Lutheran before, I believe? It's been a long time since I've... Uh, <clears throat> looked at his stuff really um but yeah there's jesus through the centuries mary through the centuries um this is a book here very interesting person there if you're familiar with him um and then i would have his beginning to pray book right here anthony bloom father anthony bloom Yeah, it's kind of an eclectic. I mean, you can get anywhere from J.I. Packer to Kyriakos Markides. <laughs> so, uh, and some of this stuff I probably will not, like, I'm not going to read too deeply in Hans Kung. I will take another look at that justification book. Maybe if I want to um, um, include some more modern stuff in what I am currently writing and i think that i learned recently didn't he like deny human vitae um i don't completely know but that's something interesting that i'm looking into and this stuff down here c.s lewis this scott hong book i probably wouldn't really purchase any of his stuff um not to bad mouth or anything it's just not really there's a john michael talbot thing and um some other stuff that there's Pope John Paul II, Across the Threshold of Hope, stuff that I picked up for free at a Catholic um, thrift shop, St. Vincent de Paul's here, so I just grabbed that stuff because I will peruse through those things. Um, here's John Doan Devotions. Great historian here. Um, Norwich, John Julius Norwich. That's his book on Byzantium. And I got some reformed dogmatic stuff here. Bavink, 
Voss. I got an introduction to the philosophy frame, systematic theology frame, Synod of Dort, stuff on the Catholic Reformation, Barth, that was given to me as a gift. So yeah, like a lot of this funds have been also um, limited. So I've picked up along the way at like different used bookstores and stuff. So it's been very interesting to see kind of what I've ended up with. Here's from my old library though. This one survived uh, the book of mystical chapters. And I could go on and on into a long depressing story about how I lost this stuff, but it's gone. So there's no use of spilling crying over spilt milk i just will continue to rebuild and um be thankful for the many things that god does um bless me with george herbert poems and here's some more stuff up here here's john bunyan and uh pierre tillhard de chardin confessions of augustine philosophy of religion it's just very kind of random really some of the stuff I ended up with so and um I wouldn't consider myself an ecumenist by any means or even really like a syncretist um but I do identify more with the perennialist school and um there are some orthodox um thinkers that belong to that a lot of those thinkers are Sufi Islam but there's a lot of reasons why I can go into that as far as Sophia Perennis. But if I had to categorize myself, it would definitely be traditionalist. And a large part of my studies now are deciding on the remainder of my spiritual path and which way. I mean, it's definitely, I've said in so many videos that I definitely identify completely and entirely as Christian. And um, believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God and... Um, that's how I roll on that. However, I do read in Hermeticism and um, in um, metaphysics, spirituality, uh, world religions, philosophy of religion. And we'll go over all of those book collections too. Like I could show you my um, Vedic and Hindu and Buddhist stuff or um, Islamic stuff which is not a lot but um a decent amount um right now i'm wanting to read more in conjunction with um really like my faith and practice and chosen spiritual path but i'm trying to clarify that and decide for the remainder of my life how i want to pursue that and what direction i will be going and i'm prayerfully considering that so it's kind of like a spiritual renaissance of sorts and um my background was more of a ev Protestant evangelical, but I um, quickly started going to a more um, high church, more like an Anglican, Anglo-Catholic church. And then when I discovered Orthodoxy, geez, now probably tw close to 25, 26 some years ago, during the time when Frankie Schaefer wrote Dancing Alone and um, stuff like that. I started attending a Russian church and then going to a traditionalist Greek monastery and very, very intently studying patristics. And I was a catechumen, um, different times for, I was catechumen for, <laughs> um, first, like a, first I went to like a real core church, then, uh, an OCA church, and then I'm um, to a Greek Orthodox church of America. And then the monastery I always went to was very um, traditionalist, skipper night type of monastery. And I could go on and on about that. I could go on and on about um, Orthodox uh, Presbyterian, um, Presbyterianism as well. And for all of this, I guess what I'd want to say is I definitely know for myself and the sacraments, I have more of a definite high church view and definitely believe in the importance of liturgy and ritual rituals and um sacraments and but also creeds and confessions and um i guess that's really enough of that conversation i don't want to ramble on too much about it i am interested in things such as like um you'd say like a book like by someone like marslov 
both um, in inclusion and embrace and how about the Vatican Council II was kind of um, inclusion and some of what we see with um, like say the Pope um, Francis now and being a Jesuit Pope and um, what that means as far as Protestantism and Protestant Reformation and I'm interested in relationships um, East and West that's would really explain something like this um, which I think is funny where I put this because it's next to the invocation of the name of Jesus by Korma Swami. Now that's uh, Rama um, Kumar Swami, who is, if I look down here, this is just going off on a tangent, but I will do that because uh, this is my video that I'm making. Um, so why not? Um, hopefully you guys will find things of interest in it. But that is the son of um, this guy here. Ananda K. Kumar Swami, and this is his work on Christian and Oriental philosophy of art, and you may know him um, in, in Boston, I think, is where his art collection is housed now at this time. And here is Dance of the Shiva, um, of Sh Shiva, and he was also Shiva, Shiva, um, and he was also, uh, <laughs> and then here's a book, Mer a poetry book of Merton, Zen and the Birds of Appetite by Thomas Merton. I made a video about Merton's influence on me, but I do want to clarify that, like, again, guys, like, I read stuff from people like this, B. Griffiths, and I glean on little things. Um, I'm interested in how they celebrate Syriac, um, Liturgy. I'm interested in some of Merton's history, particularly though, really Seven Story Mountain and um, his literature influences in English literature studies and that sort of stuff. I approach a lot of that stuff as one of my undergraduate degrees is in literature. Um, um, from that perspective, a lot of the stuff contextually, I um, find God um, that way. Um, and expressed in the logos the eternal word oftentimes um but i like i don't agree with like i'm not like i don't co-sign on this stuff uh i read it it's interesting to me and i have a lot of opinions and could speak um for quite a length of time on particular people like that b griffiths lewis also somewhat on people like uh, mcgrath or J.I. Packer and Anglicanism or any of those um, things, but uh, really um, my spiritual life at this time is uh, simple, but I am looking to find um, what it is now that I am called to by God um, spiritually. So this is kind of a cool little start and I can come and find what I need and reference what I need. Um, some people who come here from different uh, religious or Christian expressions might be like, well, what is it that this guy um, is into? You know, like, here's a shelf of Orthodox, here's a shelf of um, uh, refor more Reformed stuff. Uh, but really, I'm just a bookworm, and I enjoy reading and learning and growing and I am a Christian person and um, that's not going to change for me. Um, being a traditionalist is not going to change, but I'm always open to dialogue and learning um, what I can from all sorts of people. Um, we can talk about things like my collection of Masonic books and Mason, or we can talk about Sufi um, writings. Um, Hermeticism, I have videos talking about Jungian archetypes and tarot and all of that too. But a lot of the stuff you're going to be seeing on my channel will probably be focusing in this range of um, Protestant Reformation, um, Jesuit, Catholic Renaissance or Counter Reformation, Trent, um, a lot of the um, creeds and confessions. And um, at a later time, I'll revisit the ancient church patristics. Um, things like that, but I'm also going to be looking at um, some traditionalist Catholic things and then Trinitine um, Latin Rite Mass as well. Um, but that stuff is tying it into my um, current interests, stuff like this too. Cranmer, um, 
which I will discuss at a later time. I can hear one of our dogs. He's going to need out, so I'm going to go let him out. And I am going to bid you adieu and say have a wonderful day or evening. Uh, this is Justin William Savoy. Peace.